Our two uh, speakers today have uh, uh, something in common, which was totally planned from the beginning, and that they both uh, have backgrounds in physics. And, uh, and so, um, I, Ivan Borazan, who's at the, currently uh, a scientific associate at the OICR, in, in based on Ferretti's lab, uh, started in the physics world and, and, and then saw the light into biology, and uh, and he's going to tell us about some of the work he's been doing here at the OICR uh, in our presentation with this nice long title. <laughs> I'm going to take it away. Thank you, Francis, and thanks. I would just like to thank the community members for inviting me for, uh, for this event. So I'm going to talk to you about a classification model uh, for biological sequences that uh, uh, we have uh, proposed uh, not a long time ago, in basically this year. And uh, just to start, uh, first of all, I would say that I would like to say that we humans are particularly good at certain tasks, such as grouping, organizing, classifying, learning by association. And uh, these concepts have been extensively used through different branches of science, including mathematics, physics, chemistry, and biology. And it doesn't come as a surprise then, then uh, according to the Time magazine, um, the 31st most influential person in human history and the fifth most influential scientist is actually Carl von Linne, who is the father of the modern taxonomy. And uh, below I just give you um, a graphical overview of um, different, different taxonomic ranks and levels, start, starting from the uh, more general to the more specific. So today I'm going to talk about a problem in computational molecular biology, um, which is the correct classification of unknown biological sequences, um, having having a database of sequences with a known origin. So this is one of the fundamental, fundamental concepts in, in biology, and sequence comparison plays a crucial role in phylogenetic and uh, metagenomic analysis. Um, a recent, rel relatively recent arrival, uh, uh, next generation, generation sequencing technologies, uh, and they have dr dramatically accelerated the study of different genomes, including humans, microbial, viral, and uh, other. So there are some challenges. I would uh, separate them in two groups, technical and biological. So mo most next generation sequencing technologies produce short reads uh, that present a great challenge for both phylogenetic classification and automated genome assemblies. Um, Alignment-based methods are uh, used. However, in some uh, cases, they could uh, lead to er erroneous information when used with genomes that have undergone certain type of sequence arrangement that I'm going to talk about. Um, and most of the classification methods use either the alignment-based or composition-based approaches, but not both, so they don't actually put them together. Uh, biological challenge, uh, uh, we were particularly interested in sequence rearrangements, such as genetic recombination and shuffling, uh, or horizontal gene transfer, that are observed in uh, variety of organisms, including um, viruses and bacteria. So uh, one way to classify a sequence, you would have, say, you sequence something and you don't know where the DNA is coming from, so you would blast it against the BLAST database, you would look at the hits that come on top, and you would then associate the label of that top hit, whether it's species or genus level, with your, um, with your sequence. That's how typically it is done. However, BLAST can also give runners the results. Um, because BLAST assumes uh, a conservation of contiguity between homologous segments in the sequence. So if you have a query and reference, uh, the blocks here are, say, homo these homologous segments. So if I now switch the blocks around, um, the BLAST would give a relatively low similarity score, and you would think, you know, you would deduce that maybe these two sequences have nothing in common, although these two sequences can be actually very similar functionally. So uh, we proposed, uh, we decided to pro propose a new model for sequence comparison and classification um, that would be applicable to both nucleotide and amino acid sequences, uh, which would be biologically motivated based on some mathematical principles, um, and it should improve the classification accuracy um, over purely alignment, alignment or composition-based sequence uh, comparison approaches, and should improve the accuracy with which we could classify short trees direct coming directly and grow reads coming directly from the uh, sequencers without doing the assembly. So, uh, a small digression. So, some of these measures we are using in our model are based on k -mers. 
So k mir is a poly polymer sequence of certain length k, and uh, similarity measures based on k mirs, um, k mir counts or frequencies uh, are less sensitive to sequence rearrangement mm -hmm. than the alignment based methods. So um, I'm giving an example of two sequences, um, and I have switched them, and here we can see that uh, if we count all the k mirs, there is only a difference of two k mirs uh, between these two sequences, and the idea here is that these type of measures would be more uh, robust to this type of sequence arrangement than the blast mesh itself. So what are the sequences, that, uh, what are the uh, similarity measures that we use in our model? They can be uh, separated in two, the alignment-free and the alignment-based ones. So the alignment-free, um, uh, those that are based on K-mer counts, uh, we're using the Euclidean distance, so basically we count the K-mers in, in sequence X and sequence Y, and then uh, this basically forms uh, an Euclidean space, and we look at the distance between these two vectors in the Euclidean space, and we calculate the distance between these two sequences. So the choice of this metric is based on its simplicity, uh, well-defined mathematical properties, and the fact that it was already used as an alternative to alignment-based methods. The next a sequence uh, similarity measure is uh, based on information theory, and it calculates the, uh, the difference in the average amount of information in sequence X relative to the sequence Y, and this measure has been already successfully used for, to reconstruct some of, some of the phylogenies for whole genome sequences. The third uh, alignment free similarity measure is based on Kolmogorov col complexity. Uh, it's a compression-based me method, and we're looking at the difference in compression rates um, between sequence X and Y using uh, a compression algorithm like LZMA. And the, the reason why we choose this similarity measure is because, first of all, um, we're expecting it to, be, um, uh, to not be affected by sequence rearrangements. And second, it is complementary to the K-mer based ones. It's, it doesn't depend on either the K-mer or the K-mer counts. The other two measures we decided to incorporate in our model are, are uh, the BLAST measure for DNA sequences and uh, the Smith-Waterman for protein sequences. So the classification model, uh, we have some assumption and certain properties. So um, first of all, alignment free alignment-based similarity measures are complementary in nature. So some would be better at uh, classifying certain type of sequences than, than other. So you have, you have to have a model that basically um, choose which similarity measure you would, you would use um, uh, for classifying a particular sequence. And this is done by, uh, we are proposing a combined sequence similarity score, uh, which is basically a weighted mean of individual similarity scores. And um, this is how it looks like. Uh, it's a simple weighted mean, uh, but the, the, the weights are basically determined uh, by using F-test statistics. Um, and which reflects the discriminatory ability of each sequence, of each similarity uh, measure um, to uh, basically separate classes in the training set. So weights in this case are calculated adaptively and independently for each sequence in the test set. This is quite different from the, uh, the existing model since most of these models use um, uh, weights that are, say, either constant or there's no weight wait because they, they're actually not combining anything. So we use the simplest possible classification method, which is the nearest neighbor method, and basically it assigns the class here, uh, shown in the picture is a triangle, uh, which is the closest in distance to the, to the, to the query sequence. So the simplest possible uh, uh, classification model, which is usually also, which is also used um, as a benchmark when, you want, when uh, comparing to other more sophisticated models like the SVM. Okay, so this is a graphical illustration of what the model does. So say we have two sequences, M1 and M2, and we have a training set here. So we know that the training set uh, belongs to the, the class circle, and uh, M1 says, okay, this is a circle, and M2 says this is a triangle. If you combine them together, you will find that now um, the, uh, the M1 measure basically compensates for the M2, because it brings this T closer to the, 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 the true class. But when, if you're doing your weighting up, uh, properly, that should actually bring this T even closer to, the, to, to, to its true class. So um, there is also, we have some three parameters in the model, very few, that there is the k size, 
uh, which varies between two and a uh, um, uh, upper threshold, which is in indicated by log n. And uh, this is basically to avoid uh, classifying sequences based on their length instead of uh, uh, based on, on their content. So we've tested this model on three different data sets on viral sequences. So we have a, we have a training set of 800 viral sequences across 147 different genera. And we tried to basically determine the genus for each of these, um, of these sequences, viral sequences. We found that actual model, uh, model uh, is more accurate than most of the, uh, if uh, all of the uh, state of the art, uh, art models are there. We've tested it also on metagenome data with 759 dp in length on average. Um, and we were trying to predict the film, and we also found uh, overall that actually it was better than uh, the, uh, the models we compared to. And we also used it to actually uh, predict the family uh, for protein sequences, and we have shown that uh, a similar model that uses the compression-based uh, measure with BLAST basically um, improved the accuracy by more than 13%. Um, so in summary, we have we propose a model that combines sequence similarity scores to gain additional discriminatory information about sequences and to improve their classification. The proposed model is novel in that it uses an adaptive weighting scheme for each sequence in a test set, and it gives larger weights to similarity measures that have uh, greater discriminatory weighting in the training set. Uh, it improves uh, classification accuracy over the current composition alignment-based methods. Uh, it works uh, both on full-length genomes, reads from the real metagenome data set, short reads, and protein sequences. And our model can be generalized to any number of similarity measures that you wish. Um, and so on that, I'll just, uh, we've published it in bioinformatics in April, uh, well, the, the last uh, version was published on April the 1st. And I'd like to thank OICR, uh, the PI I'm working with, Vincent Ferretti, and uh, uh, if you have any questions, I would be glad to answer. Any questions for Aaron? Sure. Hi, great talk. So uh, I wonder how much does, uh, does the accuracy of the algorithm depend on the training set? So we basically learn the weights from the training set and then apply it and this is the way. What if you had no training set and you have no adaptive weights? Will it still outperform all that? If you, if you have no training set. Yeah, so you would have equal weights to all the RNA. Yeah, so that uh, in, uh, so there is one algorithm out there, uh, PMBL, that actually uses unweighted, it, it combines two measures okay. using an unweighted scheme, and we basically improve upon the accuracy compared to that control model. Uh, the training set is something that you can manually compose. Yeah. No, you, <coughs> the training set are, uh, we decided to download it. So these are all the sequences uh, available from the NCDRFC. Mm -hmm. So there is nothing, I mean, of, of course, uh, you could think that there is certain dependence, dependency on the training set. However, uh, we tested on different training sets and, and the accuracy was more or less the same. So when we're looking at viruses, bacteria, we found more or less always the same accuracy. So, um, Sorry. Uh, so do you, when you don't have uh, a uh, golden proof that you can measure against, right? Uh, I mean, how do you? So the, uh, the the idea is that so your training set basically say in the case of the virus is composed of eight hundred sequences, okay? Yeah. Yeah. And uh, what you do, uh, you would, for example, uh, well, the, the complete set say is composed of 1,066 sequences. So you separate that set in two. The training set composed of 800 sequences and the test set composed of 266 sequences. The test set, you put it away so the model does not know anything about that set. Yeah. So basically you're testing uh, your, your algorithm on known uh, sequences yeah. with known taxonomic labels. Yeah. Which you assume are correct. Which I assume are correct. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Yeah. Okay.